of that uh, button to make sure it's more readable. As they already know, Crowdcast already knows that I'm the type geek and I always bug them. <laughs> Hold on one second. Okay. All right. So hello guys. We're on live. Uh, we've just jumped on a couple of minutes early to make sure that you guys can see us and hear us. Can you see us and hear us? Hey, Kim, how are you doing? You are from Canada. Uh, if you cannot hear me, then I guess you won't be able to know what I was talking about. <laughs> but uh, Let's see. And we are also live streaming to the Typography Dojo group. I don't know if that's going to work, but if you're interested in joining the Typography Dojo group, Facebook group, it's right here. Hey, Carla from New York City. Hi, Carla. Yes, Brett can see us. Excellent. Brett, are you calling from? So we were just talking a couple, yes, from Scotland. Wonderful. Oh, that's Hello. right. We've, we've, got every, we've got people from everywhere. Oh, Paulo's Portuguese, but in Italy. Well, that's great. Wow. Well, good morning for those people who are in South America and, and America and <laughs> Canada. Uh, and then good evening for those who are in uh, Europe. And if you're in Asia, like a lot of our watchers are, you will be, you're up at the middle of the night, I think. So hello. Hey, Valerie Val, Val is here from Florida. Excellent. It's great to see everyone. Uh, we'll get started in just a second. Uh, Rob was wondering where you were in your career. Are you interested in lettering for as a career? Are you dabbling in it? Are you, let us know if you do lettering and if so, um, if you're a professional, if you're an amateur, if you're just trying it out or if you're doing it for clients already. So let us know. Uh, meanwhile, please use the share button underneath our video to let everyone know that we're getting started. Um, Rob is at the end of his day. What time is it there now, Rob? Uh, we're now five o'clock. It's not, it's the end of the day. It's not the end of my day. It's kind of, of I've got, day. No, 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 I've got deadlines that go on into the evening, but, but yeah, it's, um, it's five o'clock. Yeah. Excellent. And do you, do you usually work late? Mostly always. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, if, okay. if it's, it's, the, it's this sort of industry where it's kind of everything's deadline driven. So it's, it's usually, yeah, usually into evenings and um, into, well into the night. Right. That's true. Um, let's see here. So Heather, hey, Leslie, Leslie's here from North Carolina and Heather from Connecticut. Breck says lettering related to branding and logo design work, professional, sole proprietor. Wonderful. Excellent. Cool. Uh, and you guys have been putting in questions underneath the questions and answers tab, which is a perfect place to put it. If you have questions while Rob is giving his presentation, please add them onto the tab underneath. Uh, we are giving away a few sets. Actually, Tombo will be giving them away. Rob will will choose. Oh yeah, guess what, Rob? You're going to choose the best questions, the most interesting. Oh wow, questions. pressure, <laughs> pressure. <laughs> and uh, for that, Tombo will be sending again. I'm sorry, only to our U.S. and Canadian residents, but they will send uh, pencil sets and also pen sets. Rob, did you get any through the mail? Mine arrived about uh, three or four days ago. Yeah, mine oh, have excellent. arrived. Yeah, which is great. Excellent. Yeah. Have you used Tombow brush pens before? It's, this will be the first time I've used them now. This will be the first time, so looking forward to it. Wonderful, excellent, mm. yeah, I love them. What is your tool of choice, typically? Uh, typically, I tend to work with Faber-Castell pit pens. Um, mm -hmm. What I found is that over time, you get a consistent, uh, a consistent black through their colors. So whether you're using the kind of the, the really thin nibs or the really thick nibs, it means you can kind of do the detail in thin and then sort of fill it in with, with the thick nibs and you get that consistent black throughout. So I, I tend to do, use a lot of Faber-Castell pens. Mm, wonderful. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Paolo's a graphic designer, but really trying to start with lettering. Uh, Joe here from Philadelphia. Vittoria from here, from uh, Portugal. And Pernell, uh, interface designer, but love lover of both topography have been trying to teach myself sign writing for the past few years, still loads to learn. There's a lot to learn. <laughs> always a lot to learn. <laughs> Marina from San Bernardino, California. Hey, Marina. And Kim, I haven't tried lettering yet, but I'm really interested in learning. I have always been interested in hand lettering. It's a beautiful art form. It is a beautiful art form. It's really odd that it's, it, that it's taken off, hasn't it? 
Rob? I mean, it seems like everybody absolutely. is. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Yeah, absolutely incredible. I don't think there's a there's a sort of better time to get into it in terms of its commercial possibilities. But uh, but yeah, I think it I think it's a fashion. I think everything a few years ago went really really digital, and I think naturally the way to get away from that digital is is bringing kind of the the, the feel of a hand into it again. And I um, yeah, and, and I think I think that's you know that's where we are with it at the moment. Right. Um, okay, so we're going to get started. You guys are really in for a treat because Rob has never done a podcast or a webcast before. This is his very first, and from what he tells me, it's very he's very picky. So I'm really happy that he chose us uh, in our group in order to talk to us. Um, there's a couple more uh, notes in the chat bar, Rob. I don't know if you can see him. It looks like Carla says, after years of graphic design, I'm moving towards handcrafted lettering, dabbling, and developing cool yeah yeah i mean i'll i'll talk about it slightly in my presentation but my a lot of my background is digital so it's kind of i've not really um i've not put away the computer or anything like that do you know what i mean and have you been a, i've been sat in a mac using InDesign, and i'm old enough to be you know, quark express and photoshop and illustrator and all those things for years and years and years so it's kind of um i still have to keep a, f a foot firmly in kind of digital as well Excellent. Excellent. So we're going to get started. Welcome everyone to Typography Dojo. I'm Rachel Elner, producer of TypeEd, and I'm joined today all the way from the UK, Rob Draper, who I have. Hello, Rob. <laughs> I saw his work on Instagram and saw that he was drawing on, I think, a bagel. And I said, well, who draws on food? <laughs> and I saw the letter and I just thought it was such a beautiful, illustrative style. Um, it's not flat. There's usually a lot of dimension. There's a lot of texture. Uh, and I was really curious to find out more about Rob and how he got started in this. So welcome, Rob. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you for kind of all these people. I'm seeing these questions and seeing people from all over the world. And it's, it's great to see. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. Can I ask you to give you give us a tiny, in, uh, just uh, introduce yourself a, a, a tad? Okay, cool. So I'll, I mean, I'll talk about it. I'm doing a, about to do a presentation in a minute, which kind of goes through everything I do. But my name is Rob Draper, and I'm an artist and designer. I'm based in the UK, based in Worcester. Most people know Worcester for Worcester sauce, Worcestershire mm -hmm. sauce. That's where, that's where I'm from. And I do lettering, mainly kind of hand lettering for editorial, for murals, for brands, for clothing all sorts of bits and bobs, but generally lettering based and generally hand lettering based work. But as aside from that, I sort of draw on things as well for my own kind of entertainment and, and by putting those on social media is perhaps kind of what, what's kind of uh, where a lot of people know me from. Right, and for our entertainment as well. <laughs> hey, uh, Bernardo from Philly, excellent. Okay, so let's get started. Rob, if you'd like to start sharing your screen. Okay, cool. That would be great. And so, Philippe from Colombia, hello. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Again, please let us know that we're going to get started. Okay, Rob, we can see your full screen. Go ahead and get started. Okay, cool. So, again, thank you ever so much for tuning in this evening. My name is Rob Draper, and kind of this is, um, this is a presentation I've put together, which kind of explains really um, what I do and kind of how I've come to do it. So, so this is in the beginning so at the very start when i was i'm now 43 so when i was at school school um art i loved art and was always quite um keen on art but it was never particularly it never particularly motivated me never particularly um was that interesting um but yet i always wanted to draw and then when i was about 10 or 11 this thing this package landed from america and it was hip-hop and you had the rap music and you had the graffiti and you had the break dancing. And all of a sudden there was a kind of home for my art. This was my, this is my French book. Uh, this is from, so that's, there's a, I don't know if you can see, there's an 87 on there. It's my French book from 1987. Oh, that's, so that's awesome. That's what, that's what 30 years ago now. And, and all of a sudden there was this, this home for, for my kind of creative ideas and drawing these letters. That was me going into teenage years. Um, and graffiti gave me this, it gave me a social life, it gave me adventures. Um, that's me again as a teenager. And I, the only reason I sort of mention it tonight and, and I bring it up and I, I talk about it now is because these kind of things stuck with me from a really, really, really early age. And they were that the more creative the concept, the better. The more creative you could develop a concept into your piece of graffiti, the better. 
the more creative the letters you could do, the better, whether you did something with them that made them more technical or more detailed, but the better they were seen by, by other people. And the more creative the place and the better. So where you actually placed that piece of work was, was seen in kind of um, higher regard. And then finally, it was that you do the piece, you get the photo and you move on. Now, obviously with something like graffiti, you're gonna paint on something that you don't necessarily know that's gonna be there the next day. If it is, it's always a bonus. But at the same point in time, you sort of, once you take the photo, you kind of accept that it might be gone, but if it's something that's gonna move, it may be driven away, it may be cleaned off. So you get the photo and move on. And so that's kind of where we're gonna leave graffiti tonight. But from there, I then went, uh, left school and I did three years at art college and then went from there to university, did three years at university and then left university and did pretty much, spent about 20 years doing pretty much every job in the industry. So from, I did work experience helping out in a photocopying department. I did um, graphic design, designer, senior designer, magazine designer, um, a partner, a creative director. And the last job I found myself in before going it alone was as art director of a clothing company. And as part of that role, one of the things I found myself doing was I got asked to become involved in the shop fitting. So if you think about almost the theater that surrounded the clothing, the, the, the things that when you go into a clothing store and you see clothes, the stuff that surrounds them, the props, the point of sale, so things would happen like this, we would buy in these tea chests and I would distress those tea chests and make them look like that one in the middle. So for any of you interested, that was, um, that's two types of coffee, uh, tea bags, brown paint and dirt. Oh, and I would, I would distress these, these and kind of, and, and paint the branding onto them. And then they would go into stores. Um, I would distress um, picture frames on an almost industrial level. So I'd go and buy brand new picture frames and then I would paint them gold and spray them black and sand them down and spray them again and make them look kind of vintage and old. And they would go into our store fittings and there you can see kind of examples of how the tea chests would look in there. Um, now, obviously, everything's always done as, as in this industry is. Everything's always generally tend to be to be done on a budget. So what I do is I try to find the the cheapest possibilities but without ever compromising the look. So the second I'd finished with the paint cans, the second I'd finished with the paint, I'd then use the next cans of paint to paint the branding onto the paint cans and the paint cans would go into the store fittings. Um, I would buy old records. You can just see records in the background there. And I would paint onto the, onto the record sleeves, onto the records themselves. Um, here I would, you can see the picture frames there, the distressed picture frames. Uh, beer bottles, I'd go and find beer bottles and paint branding onto those. Um, I would make shelving out of pallets, so I'd break apart pallets, make shelving and kind of, again, distress those, paint them brown and black and sand them down. Uh, the figure, the, the figure there, the gold figure, I would go to uh, pound stores, which I guess you would call dollar stores over there, and I would, mm -hmm. buy, I would buy toys from there and I would paint those and sit them into there. And again, you can see the record there. Um, wine bottles, records, um, more paint cans and this is kind of how it all came together so this is a um this is a till area in a large retail store in the uk and then two days later i'd leave it looking like that and that's kind of how it all came together and i really 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 love doing it i really 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 enjoyed doing it and um, at the same time in any spare time i had i started drawing these birds i started really liking this idea of finding things that you could throw away, finding things that had absolutely no value to them, and then spending lots and lots of time embellishing them. So I'd get these envelopes and I'd draw birds on them in a, in a ballpoint pen. And I did a few of these, again with a record as well. Rob, can I ask you just to move your mouse over to the side? Ah, okay, sure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So I would do these record sleeves and paint these birds, I'd draw these birds onto them in ballpoint pen. Oh, that's gorgeous. And I really, really love doing these. So kind of my weekends and my evenings away from my day job, I would do these. And so at this point, life's good. Life's really good. All my, all my creativity is being kind of filled at the moment. It's, um, you know, I'm, I'm earning a wage. I'm doing the job I want to do. Um, 
I'm selling now, selling work through a gallery. Everything seems to be going really, really well. And then all of a sudden, uh, we got called down to our studio and we all got sat in a circle and we got told that we'd been bought out by a large company um, up in the north of the UK. But not to worry everybody because we're not moving up north. Now, I don't know if anyone can see where this is going. So a short time later, we were then told we are moving up north. And as such, my job went with it. And I had the option to move and relocate, uh, which I didn't particularly want to do at the time. So my first thoughts were, <laughs> I had absolutely no idea what to do. I had absolutely no idea what to do at all. I'd found myself in this position where I loved my job. Um, there weren't a lot of jobs doing that around here. And as I've mentioned before, I'd, I'd worked for a lot of the agencies in the past. I've worked for a lot of brands in the area in the past and the roles I'd done. And so I had absolutely no idea what to do. So the first thing I did was I went and spoke to my employers and next to our offices, they had a warehouse, a big warehouse that was full of stock. Now, this is it nearly cleared out. And um, I sort of went to them and said, is there any possible chance that um, I can clear out the warehouse? There was nobody left to clear out the warehouse. And they said, yes. So we agreed that they'd pay me on a daily basis and um, I could go and clear out the stock. So what I did for three months every day was I went into this warehouse and I take down a box from the shelves, a box of shirts, for instance, and I'd open that box and I'd count the shirts in it and I'd put them into another box. And from there, I would write how many shirts were in that box. And then that was it. They went off to be shipped somewhere else. And I remember it really well because it was it was three months. It was over winter and it was absolutely bitterly, bitterly, bitterly cold. And I would put the clothes on in the morning that I was meant to be sorting just to kind of keep myself warm. And this, you'll have to excuse the quality of the photo, but I had no idea I'd be talking about it mm -hmm. a while later. But every time I'd, had a, I'd have a, um, a stop and have a drink or a lunch, lunch, something like that, have a coffee, I'd find bits of paper. I'd find bits of paper and pens and I'd just draw and draw and draw. And I kind of kept thinking to myself, you know, something's gonna happen, something's gonna happen. I'm gonna finish clearing up this warehouse and my career is gonna be all mapped out and I'm gonna know exactly what it is I want to do. And that never happened. That never happened. It got to Christmas that year. Um, the warehouse was empty and that was the end of it. I sort of, I walked away from there and had absolutely no idea what to do. I started to know what I didn't want to do though. I'd, I'd, all these different jobs that had come up that I didn't really want to do that weren't really options. So I sort of thought, well, do you know what? I'm gonna just start and I'm gonna try things and I'm gonna see what happens. I'll try anything that comes along and I'll see what happens. So the first kind of lettering job, a friend of mine um, has, an, has a local agency and they, he contacted me and he, had, he knew somebody who had a restaurant who was looking for some kind of authentic hand-painted typography. So I came up with these designs and I went and painted those and really, really enjoyed doing it. And did a few pieces throughout that restaurant. And then I complete, uh, got another commission and that other commission was from a company based around London who commissioned me to paint bits of old things, I guess is the best word and put these kind of embellished typographic messages onto them. So I'd come up with the concept of what we were gonna, the words we were gonna have and, and what we were gonna put them on. So we do like old doors like this or things like this. This is on old, um, this is old floorboards from a Welsh chapel that were painted. And they'd sell them as fine art pieces to hang in people's houses. There's another one there. And so I started to really, really enjoy that. And I kind of thought, well, maybe that's an avenue. So I went off then and I briefly did a training course with a, a barge, a canal barge painter to kind of find out if there were things that I was kind of missing because I was completely self-taught. I had no idea if, the, if I was doing things in the right way, if it was a quicker way. So I went and did some training with her, which was absolutely great and really, really useful. Um, I then picked up some work with the with the team at Superdry and went and worked with them on painting some skateboard ramps. And so I was really, really enjoying this cam painted thing of kind of moving away from the computer and, and getting more and more kind of my hand into this lettering. But my problem was I was still kind of fairly anonymous. I had, you know, nobody really knew of me and everything. I had a website on uh, at, at this point. I'd started, uh, started with my website. But this was kind of my, the problem I had is that I really, really, really hate selling. Um, I kind of figure 
uh, I hate people selling to me as well. I, I, I figure if I know I want something, then I know I want it, if that makes sense. I don't need somebody to tell me how wonderful it's going to, you know, make my life or whatever. So, so my kind of problem was how do I sell without selling? And so this was my idea at the time. This was my, my, my brilliant idea, which was going to change everything. And I'm a keen cyclist, and um, I've done a lots and lots of T-shirt designs for people over the years. And so what I thought I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with a cycling brand. I'm going to come up with a brand of clothing, and it's going to work in two ways. The best thing in the world is that going to be it will generate me money, so I generate a lot of money from it. Uh, but at the same point in time, what's hopefully going to happen is people will see these designs, and they'll think to themselves, oh, I'm I wonder where I'm going to get the, you know, I wonder who did that. They'd look on my website, they'd find my details, and then they'd see me and perhaps commission me for work. So that was kind of my plan, really. That was really where I wanted to head. Um, there's some mock-ups of the T-shirts that I'd done at the time. And I had everything, everything mapped out and ready to go. So I had two lookbook photographers uh, booked in to, to do the shoots for it. I had the T-shirts costed up. I had the swing tickets costed up. I had the website ready, I'd bought the domain name, everything is absolutely ready to go, really, really ready to go. But this thing, this thing wouldn't really leave me alone. This kind of something out of nothing thing. And I kept thinking, I wonder if there's any, any value I can get out of this. The graffiti thing, the clothes company of, of generating kind of props out of nothing, the birds um, drawn on the envelopes, and then those hand-painted doors and the old floorboards. And that whole concept of this, the, the contrast of finding things that are so throwaway and so discarded and in embellishing them and spending time on them. And that really wouldn't leave me alone. And at the time I spoke to uh, a good friend of mine and we were having a conversation about this. And um, well, oddly, one of his friends is um, a guy called Donald Jackson. And Donald Jackson is the calligrapher to the queen, the official calligrapher to the queen. And, and he sort of, he told me this quote, and it was that play working is the best investment you can make. And I, I sort of took that from what work would I do if I had no brief, if I had no client, if I had no budget, if I had nothing at all, what would I, what would I do? And it just that stuck with me as well and, and just kept me thinking and thinking and thinking, what shall I do? And then one day, at this point in time, I'm now sort of, I've still got big empty periods of days where I'm not working and I'm trying to figure this out and I'm trying to bring in work. And I'd had a coffee and I'd drawn this on the cup. And I'd used Instagram, put it onto Instagram. And, and I'd got really, really good feedback on it. And it was really, really surprising. Instagram, I'd started using and thought to myself, it may be something that could be quite useful for what I do. Um, I liked the fact that you could just put up an image and you didn't have to be, it wasn't like a Facebook where you had to really, really talk about, talk about it. It was just, you could just put up that image. And so after uh, that, yes. Could you tell me what was the time frame when you posted that cup? Uh, this was probably, oh crikey, this would be maybe two and a half years ago, perhaps now. Okay. Probably about two and a half years. Maybe it's a tiny bit longer than that. And no, I think that first cup was about three now, about mm -hmm. three years. And I fell into this really, really, really um, brilliant loop of, of I'd draw on these, these things and I'd get really, really positive feedback. So I'd go back and I'd push it a bit further and I'd maybe embellish it a tiny bit more. And then I'd get more positive feedback. So I'd go back and I'd push it further. And at the time, I mean, for any of you out there who've ever um, worked on your own, been, been self-employed, or worked in an office on your own, it can be quite isolating at the, at the start. It can be quite an isolated experience of kind of sat there and, and you know, you've got no work on as well. And, it, and I found it really, really motivated me to kind of go back and try and push it further and push it further. So the cups became more embellished. The sort of slogans on them became kind of more and more grand. And so I thought to myself, what if I were to treat it like a paid project? What, and so I gave it an area on my website. I gave it a name. I called it Coffee Time and also Create More. And, and I thought, what if I, was to, what if I was to focus on it like it was an absolute project? So I started doing these more and more and putting these online. Wow. And they became, I then took it to the tops as well. And then I started thinking about this concept of, again, this throwaway thing of getting the photo and then 
losing it, getting the photo and then completely losing the object. And so I'd sort of, I'd, I'd, I'd learned how to use uh, one shot paint, which is the kind of like the sign writers, um, the sign writers enamel paint. And so I started painting on coins as well. And I paint on coins and then go and spend them. I take the photo and then go and spend them. And I had this idea that perhaps, you know, one day they would turn up on somebody's door and I'd get an email or something. And, and um, the envelopes as well. So I'd done the birds on the envelopes. I'd really, really enjoyed that thing with the birds in the envelopes. So I'd, I started to take lettering onto the envelopes as well and, and move that on. I started to do all, any, any sort of currency I could find. So notes like this, I would draw on them. And then I would just go and spend them, just go and immediately spend them. Once I'd got the photo, I, that was it. I'd sort of lost the attachment with it. It didn't matter anymore. Ikea pencils. So I kind of, this is one of those things, I guess, where, you know, 90% of us, when we leave Ikea, you've got a pencil in your pocket by accident. But it always kind of amused me that when you've got 25, is that theft? You know, and it kind of, I, I, I draw on those. But again, it was that challenge of just finding the most uh, worthless thing and then spend it as long as I could embellishing it. I then started to travel slightly as well. So I was traveling um, with, with work and with what else was going on. And so I'd go to, uh, this one was in Germany. I left this in Germany. Uh, the one on the left there is, was left in Spain. The one on the right was left at London Bridge. And I started to just leave them in stores as well. So I draw on them and just leave them where they were. And I kind of I was really happy for them to sort of almost run the gauntlet of either being somebody picking it up and thinking, I'm going to keep that or just being thrown away in the bin. It, it didn't really matter to me. Once I'd got the photo, it, it just didn't matter to me at all. So all of a sudden, this thing is kind of taken over my life and my week is now sort of divided up into this. I've got paid work. I've got Apostle and I've got the cups. And of course, the, the two thirds of my week aren't generating any money at all. And one of the things at the time is I'd taken on some, uh, taken on some work lecturing and lecturing in graphic design, in uh, art and design. And I picked up a series of different, uh, different lectures. So I was working with uh, schools, special needs schools, um, adults, students, and I remember it really, really well because I picked up a series of um, sessions at a men's prison. And so as part of working in a prison, obviously all your electronic devices and everything are completely taken from you. So laptops, iPads, phones, anything like that, anything that's recordable or with any contact with the outside world is, is taken from you. So I'd been working in a prison that day and I, I left in the evening, went and sat in the car and turned on my phone and my phone is absolutely vibrating itself to pieces. And I've got text messages, I've got emails, I've got uh, voicemails. Um, and I'm just like, oh, crikey, what's happened? What's happened? What's happened? And the first message I get is my mom. And my mom sat at home with her iPad on reading the Daily Mail. And there's an article on these cups in the Daily Mail on the homepage. And, oh. it, pre and it pretty much blew up from there. It just went absolutely crazy from there. So from there, it sort of, it went around the world a few times, really, I guess. And you can see, I mean, this is just some of the screenshots of just for this presentation, but it sort of, it went to pretty much every corner of the world, um, drawn on these coffee cups and drawn on these, um, these discarded throwaway things. One of the good ones, it was a really complimentary piece, which did really well, which was Bustle, which I believe is a kind of big magazine over your way and which was absolutely great. It was a really, really complimentary piece. One of the really, really big ones for me was Design Taxi. Oh, so, yeah, that's a big so, one. Yeah, so it was kind of, I remember it really well. It was, it was a great one for me, and that's on their homepage. On the left-hand side, they were doing a feature on an IKEA campaign. On the right-hand side, they were doing a feature on a McDonald's campaign. And in the middle is kind of this coffee cup thing of, of me drawing on these coffee cups. And it was just absolutely great for me. It sort of... What was quite nice about that is certain people had kind of uh, picked up on the novelty aspect of it. And this, these had actually picked up on the lettering and kind of, which was really, really great for me. Um, it's found its way across the international design press um, from there. This is just some examples of it being in press. Um, Shutterstock did a really complimentary piece, which was again, really, really, really great for me. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. And, and so kind of to bring us to kind of full circle, what happened to Apostle? 
absolutely nothing. It's still there. It's there's a shoebox <laughs> with everything ready to go, everything ready to go. The kind of the shop window I wanted it to be for for me um, ended up being the coffee cups. It didn't. It 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 just it just came out that way. It was a complete kind of accident of that. But Apostle is still there. It's still completely completely ready to go and kind of maybe one day it will. But it's in terms of what I want the vehicle I wanted it to be for me. Um, became these coffee cups and these drawing on things. Uh, the cups are now a, a range of um, ceramic cups that are sold around the world, which I work with the company on. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Um, now, here's the thing, is kind of what I learned. It wasn't until af- uh, it, quite a, a while after that I went back and started looking at the cups that I realized that actually what they'd enabled me to do was kind of learn on the job really without without realizing it so the one on the left is pretty much the first one i did the one on the right's a fairly recent one of kind of and and probably done in half the time and so it was just it was really really interesting to to realize that actually it kind of really really developed me as as my style without kind of again without it being intentional at all um there again is the first time on the left i ever tried to draw on um, kitchen towel and the right, again, is kind of pretty much where the kitchen towel idea got to. I still love the project. Uh, I'm doing something at the moment, which is called Bone China on a Budget, which, again, is that kind of whole idea of contrast, of spending as long as I possibly can on something that's as disposable as it possibly can be. So these are paper plates and, um, and trying to make them almost look uh, in the same way as kind of Bone China does. So applying kind of gold leaf to them and, and again, using a, just a ballpoint pen and a disposable paper plate. So I still, I love the challenge that it gives me. And that kind of brings us around to, again, why I do it. It's kind of funny because it's, I get asked quite a long, quite often how, you know, what, what is it? What is it that motivates me to kind of keep going back and keep doing these? And it's three things really. Um, one, it inspires me, it pushes me, and it also motivates me. It kind of, I think it kind of sharpens me up. I love it. I love um, going back and kind of challenging myself to find something else that's, dispo- you know, even more disposable or, or, or something else that really, really shouldn't be drawn on or really, you know, technically can't be drawn on. And then almost working out the challenge of actually how do I do it? How do I do it? And what do I, what do I actually put onto it? It's kind of, it's funny that nobody really asked me at the time, but these kind of the skewed motivational messages that were on the cups, certainly at the start, were aimed at me. They weren't necessarily aimed at anyone else. They were aimed at kind of inspiring me who was sat there kind of with, with no work on and thinking to myself kind of, you know, what do I do? How do I, how do I work a way out of this? Um, the other good thing that's done is that it's aimed me, it's enabled me to actually work out and about. I hadn't realized this as well. Um, there was a brief period in time where I sort of found myself without, without a studio at one point. And initially you kind of think, oh, you know, this could be a nightmare. And then, and then I actually thought, well, actually, no, I've, I've sort of, I've learned to kind of work on the road. So, so day to day, I can now pretty much work anywhere. So, so often that's my, the, the two, sh- two shots on the right can be my office for the day, my bike and my rucksack. As long as I've got all those bits in it, Generally speaking, most of my most of the concepts I do for people start with paper in a sketchbook, so I can pretty much work anywhere now. Um, the one on the left is that was drawn on a plane. Uh, the bottom left is me working in the library. We've got a great um, library where where I live and where I'm based, and so I can just turn up there and kind of work away for hours for there. And there's a kind of there's a few examples of some of the work I do. Again, I mean, there's lots and lots of my on my website so if you are interested please go and please go and look at any of it there but I've done a series of work for Penguin Random House and um, doing cover work for those uh I've worked with Nike on a series of t-shirts um this is a new restaurant brand uh called Hambo that I've worked with again there's a lot of kind of interesting work there what's kind of interesting with this one in particular is this was a, a go on site and paint it on site rather than it being digital, which a lot of the work is, ends up becoming that I do now. Uh, this was a great one for me. So this was uh, this was the start of this year. I got commissioned to do a series of four animations that were broadcast live on the red carpet and live on the Golden Globes. So again, that was a really, really great one for me. 
I've done a, a series of bikes now with a, uh, a bike manufacturer. So we've got a series that are out uh, on sale at the moment. This was one we did as a kind of showpiece for the range. Uh, this is a series of Work for Gap advertising belts. And I'm kind of finishing on this tonight that this always stuck with me that inspiration exists, but it has to find you working. It would have been so, and that was by Picasso, but it, it would have been so, 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 so easy at the start and at many points throughout this to have just gone out on my bike or gone out with my friends or put a film on or, you know, gone out. And I had absolutely no idea where this was going to take me. But I thought if I just keep working, if I work and work and work and work, it increases the chances of something happening. I don't know what that's going to be. At, at the time, I had no idea what that was going to be. But I thought if I just keep generating work, if I just keep generating work, it's going to increase those chances. And kind of that's it, really. That's kind of where we are at the moment. So let me uh, finish off by coming back onto this screen. Great. Thank you, Rob. OK. Wow, that was great. Oh, Thank you. Gosh. So, uh, <laughs> guys, if you have questions, please put them on the tab underneath. I see questions already piling up. I have a couple things for you, Rob. First of all, you are an amazing drawing talent. My gosh, you really know how to draw. Thank you. Uh, you are sort of like Picasso, where you started drawing beautifully from the start. I'm sure that right out of the womb, you had a pen. I did. Um, I, I literally would, I would draw on anything. <laughs> I would, it, 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 there's a point in life where it's a problem. It's become OK now, but I just literally will, will draw on absolutely anything. Constantly, constantly. Wow, wow. Um, and also, uh, you're sort of a Dadaist in the way that you bring attention to ordinary objects, to whatever you touch. Like people start to look at it. It could be a throwaway object. And I'm sure Starbucks loves you either for how much coffee that you purchase from them. Or you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, it, it is. It's slightly embarrassing that I'm on first name terms at most of the places I go to for <laughs> coffee now. Yeah, it is. It is slightly embarrassing. Um, and then I also noticed the photos of your desk, of your working area. You also have a gorilla pod or a tripod there. Yep. So do you, wherever you go, are you, are you doing work uh, and then shooting it every day? Or do you have a ritual or how do you, what is your timing? I've got no, no, I've got absolutely no, um, I've got no rules at all to it whatsoever. But what I generally tend to do is because of the age we're in now, where a lot of it's based upon social media, what I try and do is if I am um, if I am working and I'm work going to be working on a long piece, I do try and set up like time lapses and things like that because it, it, the, I think my the, the clients, they like to see it. And I think that kind of it, it seems to work for me. I like keeping a record of these things. Are you still there? Hello. Rachel. Yeah, can, it, hi Bernardo, can you text her? Can you still see me? Ah, cool. Okay, so should we hold on for Rachel? Cool, okay, so somebody asked me, so I can see, I can see the um, sidebar. So somebody, if you ask me a question in the sidebar, then I can answer through there, if that sounds cool with you guys. The journey, the journey of, um, so, so I guess where I am at the moment, uh, it's probably, this has been about, probably about three, four years, I guess, three or four years, I guess, in total. Um, but it's a continuation. It's, it's, you know, as I say, it's, it's a continuation. I don't sort of feel like I'm there yet, if that makes sense. If the, uh, hi, Marina, how's things? Is there something I won't draw on? And if so, why? Um, no, not at all. No, not really. Well, I don't think so. Nothing as yet. No, nothing as yet. And if anything, if it's the more I shouldn't draw on it, the more it kind of inspires me to draw on it. I oh, hear she is. Sorry. <laughs> she is. This is what happens sometimes. Apologies. That's cool. I'm glad That's that everyone cool. was asking questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were. They were. <laughs> they were. I felt a bit like the, um, like the, you know, the supply teacher at school when the teacher goes. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. 
The internet does sometimes go in and out, so I'm glad. Um, did you answer the question about the Starbucks corporate? Have they contacted you, or did you answer that? Uh, no, oh. no, no, no. I've heard bits and bobs from them. Okay. I had a complimentary email from them once. Um, they've used, uh, the, I think they used my cups um, uh, during a Christmas. Uh, I saw, saw they, uh, a Christmas promotion on Instagram uh, once. They used some of my cups on there. But no, no, uh, no, apart from that, no, apart from some, uh, as I say, some complimentary pieces from them on social media, but, but not else, uh, no, uh, and I'm not sponsored by them, I'm not paid by them, by right. like that. no. No, it's vice versa, actually, I'm sure that they have exploded because of your cups, that's my guess, so. I hope so, I hope so. Rob, let's uh, go through the questions. Guys, if you want to scan through the questions and vote them up, uh, it's up to you, but we are going to start with the one at the top, so. Rob, uh, there's a question from Kim. Hi, my name is Kim. My question is, what's the most difficult thing you have drawn on and how did you manage it? Hi, Kim. Uh, okay, so, um, crikey, I probably food, probably food. Food is, food is an absolute challenge to draw on. It's a real, real challenge. And probably out of that, um, baked beans. Baked beans were a nightmare and boiled eggs as well. So I did it at not this not Easter just gone the year before I tried to draw on a boiled egg and it was a nightmare and before that baked beans as well. So if you sort of you end up drawing almost you draw two lines on the object and then you have to draw three or four lines on a piece of paper to kind of clean the nib and then go back and then draw it again and clean the nib and they take forever. They're absolutely forever. I think that anything anything like that that's got a slightly wet surface because it just greases up the nib of the pen. So they are a complete nightmare to draw on anything food related. And uh, do you try different tools? Uh, I'm sure that Sharpies might be more permanent or maybe. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I've got, yeah, I've got uh, probably, I've got more pencil cases than you can ever imagine. <laughs> I've got huge, huge, huge amounts of pencils and pens and things like that. And um, so, yeah, I've got spirit based markers and water based markers and, you know, all the fine liners and all the, all these different sort of bits and bobs that I use from day to day for my for my work stuff that kind of end up spilling into my you know if I want to draw on something thinking well, actually which is going to be the tool for that so so often behind behind something like baked beans there's like goodness knows how many kind of trials of trying different pens on them and just just having just having to give up having to give up okay good I hope that answers your question Kim great question Valerie is asking, you have big name clients. How did you get your work noticed? I was very, very lucky. I was very lucky in that, um, again, somebody told me, a friend of mine told me um, early on, he said, they have to come to you. And, and it was one of the most difficult things I'd ever heard. Because I, I sort of, I had this vision, if I, if I send people emails saying, you know, I really like what you do. I really, really like what you do. Is there any chance I, I could work for you? I, I guess that sort of email ends up, going on to the PC in the corner of the room that nobody checks. And I guess they probably have hundreds of those emails a day, I guess. And so it was kind of, um, I was very, very lucky in that the bulk of the work I've got, the, the high percentage of the work I've got, that people have come to me and just, I've just had, had that email where it's like, you know, we want to commission something and we've seen your work and, um, and could we do this? And that's kind of pretty much how it starts. So that's generally speaking, that's, that's how all the bigger name stuff has, has come about. So is it mostly through Instagram? Yeah, I think it's, it, uh, yeah, I, generally speaking, yeah, generally speaking, it starts off with Instagram. And then from there, I guess people look at my website. So I've obviously got my web address in the profile and then they click through to there and see the other things I do. Um, because I guess it's one thing drawing on food. It's another thing it having a commercial right. aspect to it. So, so I, I, I guess what happens is is people then look from Instagram to the website and see that there is a commercial aspect and I do do murals and editorial stuff and you know clothing and things like that and it's not just you know it's not just drawing on a baked bean so right baked beans I don't know how you draw on baked beans that's nuts thank you Val don't try it <laughs> don't try it and Val it's good to see you here Joe says I am a new follower of your work and I'm absolutely blown away I've been drawing for as long as I can remember, and I just recently been diving into more and more type design and love it. I'm currently an in-house designer at a print shop. My question is, what small piece of advice would you give to someone like me who's 26 and struggling to escape the nine to five graphic design job and interested in a, letter, in a hand lettering career? I, I, well, absolutely. 
to literally keep working, keep working. It's, uh, you know, uh, uh, the bulk of the work I've done, um, I guess the bulk of the work I've done that's ended up getting me noticed has been free work that's had no clients, that's had no anything that I've done in my own time, um, that nobody's paid for. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, think it's, uh, I think you have to keep your foot in, in sort of two different camps. You have to be realistic enough to know that we've all got bills to pay. So, you know, if there's employment there, then great, use it. But at the same point in time, you know, you know when you get home in the evenings or at the weekends, you know, just design and draw and draw and draw and draw and draw. And maybe it's a case of, you know, if, you've, if you can find an outlet for it eventually. So if you can find a poster that can go on to or a flyer that can go on to if you've got a friend who's got a band or a friend who's doing some T-shirts and, and try to get your work noticed in that way, then it's just a, it's a really great kind of stepping stone to getting the ball rolling to turn it into something a tiny bit more commercial. You know, maybe through the print shop that you're working in, there's, there's an avenue to kind of bring in some of your hand letter and stuff. Um, what I would do in some of, the, some of the jobs I've done in the past have been quite dull. Um, have been really, really quite dull. And, and what, I've, what I've tried to do is, is try to um, almost meet with, the, meet with the customer and give them the typical response to that brief but also sometimes try and be, try and go a bit off the beaten track. And if they, if they don't like it, that's fine. We'll go with the, we'll go with the original choice. But if they do like it, then it's kind of, it's a bit of an added benefit for me, really. It's, it, it interests me and motivates me. If they didn't, you sort of learn to kind of dust yourself off and it doesn't really matter. And I actually, I learned something along that process of, of developing that anyway. So I think just use the opportunities that you can create around you. That's a good answer. Hope that helps, Joe. Yeah, I hope so. I, I do. I What I was watching you do, you said that you shared some of the work that you do now, which is very illustrative and almost graffiti-like in some, some of the work that you had done. And I thought, wow, what a nice full circle from where you started with in your graffiti beginnings. And now the work that you're doing, some of the work is very graffiti-looking like so. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I, it, was never, it was never intended. It was never intended at all. And it's not something I particularly... Um, I mean, it's never something I've wanted to trade off, you know, like to buy me credibility or anything like that. It, it's not like that at all. I, I guess it's just, it's just, um, I just like to draw and I like to draw lettering and kind of, you know, the commercial stuff generally tends to, um, tends to have a steer on what they like. Um, but yeah, I, I just, it's just, it, it's all lettering to me. I just like drawing lettering and it does, I, I, I don't really see a huge amount of difference between any of it really. Yeah, so you have such a wide range of style. So very, very lucky. Let's see here. So Bernardo has a question about the bone china, which you have with you right now, right? I've got, yeah, I've got bits and bobs with me tonight. So we've got, or oh, this morning, sorry, if you're over your way. <laughs> so there's bits of it there. There's bits, bits of it there. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. We're just, uh, Bernardo says, I love your mention of bone china. I was wondering if you think of permanence with these pieces. You spend so much time on them and even add gold to them. Are these meant? Are these meant to be preserved, or are they more of a performance piece? Probably, probably somewhere between the two. Somewhere between the two. As a performance piece, they are. Um, at the moment, I just, I, I literally, I, I'll produce them and I'll put them online, and then I sort of lose all attachment with them at all. I, I'll pack them away, um, and that's the end of it. I would love to, at some point, um, if a, if the right gallery were to approach me i'd love to have a show of kind of all my bits and bobs all together because i think it'd be nice to see it it'd be nice to see how it's developed over time and and you know it's it's um because there's such a personal story in it for me it's such a huge story it's, it's literally it's i mean it has literally changed my life um and, and as a result of that it'd be nice to see it all together as a body of work and perhaps that will happen but but in in the short term now it's just something that um if i'm not working that day or if I'm not working that evening or if I've got four hours free at the weekend or something like that it's just it's our time lapse do it put it online and then it's just it's it's on to the next one completely on to the next one straight away wow yes and I agree I think you should have an exhibition I'd so love to at some point I would love to right if any of you guys know any gallery uh, curators out there please get the word out <laughs> Carla is asking a uh, great presentation and story thank you and in an age of so much inspiration, how do you suggest that self-starters discover, measure, and refine what creative direction to pursue without losing focus? 
Well, that's a great question. That's a really great question. And almost, it applies to me as much as it does to, as, as, as it does to you. I think, um, I think the best thing in the world is that I, I'm able to do what I do because of the nature of the world we're in now with social media. It's, it's really great because I could, um, I'm as likely to get my next job from Australia as I am just down the road from me. And that's really great. That's really great. I don't think there's ever been a time where, where we've been able to work like this. Yeah. That, the downside to that is that obviously the world is your competition now. And that's really, really, really difficult. So it's kind of, it's, it's what you do to, to sort of make yourself kind of maybe stand out and maybe kind of, you know, get your name out there. Um, I think, I, I honestly think, I think that as designers, uh, designers, as artists, as creatives, I think we've all got something in us, that spark that, that, that makes me different to you, Rachel, which makes me different to, to uh, like Rosie and Heather and uh, Victoria and Bernardo. I think we've all got a, a slightly different spark in us. Um, and I think it's about kind of finding that spark and nurturing that spark and pushing that spark and doing your own thing. Um, doing your own thing and just working and working and working and seeing how you can shape that spark and actually can you then make that spark commercial. And I think it's about that really. I think it's about kind of dedication to that and and seeing where it takes you. Great. Hope that helps, Carla. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Paulo asks, how to survive and get noticed in a market that's so crowded at the moment, Rab? Sort of the same. You sort of answered this already. Baked beans. Baked beans. <laughs> And uh, Victoria actually found the baked beans and she posted a link in the chat bar if anyone wants to take a look at Rob's baked beans. <laughs> and do you love baked beans or why did you choose? No, 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 I, it's, um, no I, it's, it's literally a case of um, wherever I am, if I'm in a, if I'm in a uh, supermarket, if I'm, if I'm at home, if I'm at a friend's house, um, wherever, I'll just end up looking around the room and, and if there's something that shouldn't be drawn on, I'll try and draw on that one thing. And it's probably the thing, the thing that's the worst thing to draw on. The thing that's the, the, the thing that you think nobody's gonna, you know, firstly, no one can draw on it. And secondly, no one ever would draw on it. Why would anyone want to draw on that? And then that becomes in my head of like, okay, I've now need to make a baked bean happen. So you have your personal challenge. So it's a game. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's my own, as I say, it, the, the social media aspect of it and the, and the feedback that I've got through social media has been absolutely great. But at the same time, it's absolutely a personal challenge for me as well. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's my own sort of thing that it motivates me and kind of keeps me going. Great. So I guess your answer would be basically you're inspired by your environment. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, completely. Lorraine is asking, oh man, love your disposable cups and discarded napkin projects. You're going to have stalkers following you around just for the chance to nab one. <laughs> Do you have a bucket list of what you want to draw on? Not really. I mean, I've got, um, let me, so, so I'll have sketchbook after sketchbook of, of, um, of stuff where it's kind of, it's half baked ideas that have kind of, because often it's the case that it's a concept. You need to start with a concept. So I'll have these kind of loose concepts written down somewhere. And it's then about sort of, once you've got the concept, it's about then finding an object to put that concept onto. Then it's the challenge of putting actually how you get that concept onto that object. And then it's kind of the presentation of it. So I'd, I've not got a huge list, but I never switch off from it. I never, ever switch off from it. I've always, as I say, I always constantly look in. There's always, there's always something and there's an idea that maybe I've had two years ago that, um, that like I've, I've written down somewhere and parked that all of a sudden I'll see something and think to myself, I've got to draw on that. I've absolutely have to draw on that. Great. So Rob, I was wondering, I'm just going to open up your screen a bit. Can you show some of the things that you have, some of the sketches since you were talking about that? Okay, so I've got here, so this is kind of pretty much, um, whoa, this is pretty much how go. things start. This is, you know, generally speaking, most things start with a pencil idea. This is commercial work. This isn't the personal work. Um, that there was the first, first, first sketch I, I ever did for the Globes. So the Golden Globes. Here is... This is, again, I, it's very rare, very, very rare that you get these things right first time. So this is kind of some of the work, some of the piles of work that I did for, for Nike. So I would, I would um, 
I would expect to, to write the same word sort of 30, 40, 50, 60 times and, and just go over it and over it and over it and over it again. So you can kind of see really roughly there of writing the same word. I wow. trace a lot as well. So I use a lot of layout paper. And what I generally tend to do is I'll come up with a concept of something and then do a rough sketch and then go back over that sketch to kind of on the light box and trace back over it and refine it and trace back over it and refine it and trace back over it and refine it until it's, until it's ready to, um, to propose to the client. Um, I'm just trying to think. This has been one of my... This is the, da the, the, the most ridiculous thing ever, but it's, it's such a help for me. I printed this out. I printed that out at the job I was at before I got made redundant. And all it is is a series of horizontal lines. And what I use, I use that on my layout pad. So that sits underneath uh, and, and it means I can get my verticals and my horizontal straight no matter what lettering I'm doing. So that's a really, really, really useful piece for me. Um, I also, I use a lot of curves, uh, French curves, ovals, circles, things like that. So use a lot of those as well. A traditionalist after my own heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, again, I sort of, um, in terms of kind of what makes, hopefully, hopefully the appeal of people using me is the fact that it, it all comes from the hand sort of thing. I try, to do, I try to do as little as I possibly can digital until the very, very end when it's kind of scanning and retouching and proposing to the, to the client. But I kind of figure, hopefully, if you're coming to me for a reason, then hopefully that reason is, is those curves and that, the pencil and the, you know, the, the things like that. Um, this, again, this is a quite a good example of how I work. So if you want to go, so this here was, these are three pieces here. So, so here you've got pretty much the first sketch for it. So mm -hmm. I do the first sketch and you can see kind of how I split up the letters from there. Then we would then take that into... Again, this is pencil and I'd use it as a trace, trace directly over it and then kind of sketch, sketch and shade that in. And then from there, wow. we would start to develop that in ink as well. And then you would work and then I'd do a final piece from there and then from there it would go into production. So it's just a case of, you know, often it's getting that concept and it's working back and back and back and back over that concept until you get to a point where you sort of, the client's happy and the client's ready to sign it off and then you move into actually generating the final artwork. Great for sharing that. We love seeing the paper and pencil. Lorraine is asking, you mentioned on your website, I'm fascinated by a something out of nothing approach, creating something of worth on something so disposable, giving something trash bound a possible second life. Very powerful stuff. When you look at an object, do you see what else it can be? What's your inspiration for the transformation? That's a very Michelangelo question, isn't it? I don't, I, again, it's just it's um, it's often the case of, of of having a concept starting with uh, just some sort of concept in my mind. Some, so the kind of like um, kind of like the, like these really of, of thinking actually, what, you know, what I want to do is I want to like these. So, so what I want to do is I want to find something that's absolutely as disposable as possible, something that's got no value to it at all, something that nobody should be spending any amount of time drawing on or creating onto and then from there thinking to myself well actually i'm going to then spend as long as i possibly can and as i say certainly with the coffee cups um certainly with the, the early coffee cups the whole point was to kind of the, the, these motivational me motivational messages that kind of that pushed me so i think i think that becomes the challenge really I, I, there's there's nothing i wouldn't draw on hopefully. And it's, it's all, as I say, I've got sketchbooks and sketchbooks of lists. And a lot, a lot of the time it's just finding that object and taking it from there. It's great. Love that. The inspiration that comes from anywhere. Okay. So we're going to finish up the questions guys. So no more questions. I know you guys keep asking them. Thomas is asking, do you keep everything you draw on in terms of personal work? If so, do you ever run back through it for reference or kind of stow it all away? um yeah a bit of both i mean we're kind of lucky in that the age we're in is kind of and certainly with me because i post it online i can look back and see digital uh, digital versions of it anyway um a lot of the stuff i do keep as i say you know in my mind at some point when the opportunity is right and if the right person were to come along i'd love to show some of it i'd love to show um you know like the piece i've just showed whether you've got sort of five six seven so it, there's a real a real story to it from the absolute first sketch to final piece and and I find that quite interesting so at some point I'd love to sort of um show that together but I don't 
in terms of self-referencing it no because often yeah. often what I, I almost like to you know mentally start again with each project that each project sent, tends to have a slightly different steer um, you don't want and, to copy yourself right no 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 I, I you know the worst thing I could perhaps do is kind of keep I think I think you have to kind of adapt and slightly reinvent yourself every time rather than just literally you know doing that same thing again and again and again and again and again I think I think there you sort of almost you almost burn your own bridges, if that makes sense. You know, I think you have to keep going back and refining that. Right. I think clients do ask that every once in a while, right? They want to, oh, I yeah. want something just like that. Well, I think, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a challenge. I think that there's, I think there's, there has to be a thread that goes through it. There has to be a thread. So whether it's, you know, whoever you're using in the world, there, there has to be a thread of that, of their body of work that looks, that you'd see it and you go, oh, it's that guy or it's, 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 it's her or it's him. And I think that's really useful. I think, but, but also, as I say, it's about playing within those boundaries and kind of ad adapting that and kind of moving it on for your own personal development, but also for the clients as well. Right. Okay. Hope that helps, Thomas. Uh, Andre Catano asks, hello, Rob, have you drawn on people like body painting, for example? No, but not, not, <laughs> not other people, but myself constantly. I'm, I'm always drawing on my hands. I'm always drawing on my hands. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've got shorts on today and I've drawn on my leg when I was uh, waiting for a phone call earlier. So I've got writing all down my one leg. <laughs> so I'll just literally, I've not drawn on anybody else. Um, and I've had other people kind of take my drawings and have them tattooed to them as well, which is kind of, which is again, really great, really mm -hmm. slightly strange, but really great. But I've not, uh, not, as yet, no, I've not done much on other people. Okay, great. Thank you, Andre. And Emily asks, do you use Photoshop to piece your designs together or are they generally drawn and scanned, ready to use? A bit of both, really. It depends who it, it depends what it's for. Uh, generally speaking, I tend to kind of composite things together in Photoshop at the end just because my scan is A4, so I tend to uh, put it in together. And I work on A4 layout pads or, or A4 or A3, and then I sort of tend to slice them down and scan them as A4. So I tend to kind of composite it all together at the end in Photoshop. Um, and, and I tend to work slightly larger than I actually, actual production, if that makes sense. Um, I've just been working with a, a customer who wanted um, to develop some of my work into a wallpaper. So it meant, <laughs> it meant drawing it absolutely, you know, meant drawing it absolutely huge, really, absolutely huge. And then kind of putting together these massive files in Photoshop. So yeah, that had to be drawn huge, scanned huge and put together huge. Wow. Well, let us know when the wallpaper is ready to purchase. Because I, I will. I will. I <laughs> will. Wall back here. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Excellent. So, uh, Rob, I'm going to ask you just to uh, scroll down a little bit and click on the answered tab and just uh, scan through those and and pick out four really good questions, and we will give away. Oh. We'll, have, we'll ask Tombo to send out these pens. Uh, Whatever questions you felt like were really interesting. Thank you guys so much for asking those questions. Uh, 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 you you did say there was one that was really good. Uh, it was about? Uh, definitely Lorraine. Definitely okay. Lorraine. Lorraine gets a thumbs up from me. Um, Uh, Joe as well. Joe just uh, Joe asked me about it. Joe was the uh, person at the print shop, and I think Joe, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Joe. Two more. And, uh, and uh, Bernardo, because Bernardo, I just noticed in the uh, had mentioned that he's offered for me to show his show my work, albeit only to, <laughs> only, to, only, to only to three people, but none, you know, <laughs> works for me. I'm just I'm just booking my flight now. Um, uh, so so how many more? One more. One more. Okay, cool. Um, and I think Carla as well. I think Carla, okay. Carla Sam, I think as well. Um, Thank you so much. Cool. That's excellent. So hopefully you guys are in Canada or the US. I will contact you separately, but congratulations uh, that you won uh, pen sets from Tombo. Thank you so much. And Rob, that was really great. I, I really appreciate you giving us your time and sharing with you your story. That's Quite amazing. I was not able to to boil down a lot from your Instagram account, but I find out that you are quite a talent. So thank you, um, thank you ever yes. so much. I appreciate that. I yes. appreciate that, and I appreciate you know anyone who's asked questions tonight and the, the sidebar as well. Seeing the um, seeing the comments come up, it's absolutely brilliant. It's been social media has been the absolute thing that, as I say, I, I don't know, I don't struggle with kind of motivation, but at the same point in time, 
um, certainly early on, it was really, really great on, you know, seeing the comments on Instagram coming through and seeing, seeing how it connects with other people. And it's, I find it quite fascinating that you can draw on something in Worcestershire in the UK and it can connect so strongly with somebody on literally the other side of the world. And so thank you for the people who've tuned in and thanks for the comments. It's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. So if you guys want to check out more of Rob's work, there is a button underneath the green button that says view Rob, Rob Draper's work and you'll be able to see more of the work that he has done. Uh, definitely check out his Instagram, which is Rob Draper one as well. And of what are you working on now that we can also keep an eye on? Uh, I've just been working with a um, just been working with a restaurant, uh, an American restaurant, which isn't released yet. So that should be mm -hmm. coming out very soon. And what else? Um, all sorts of bits and bobs, all sorts of bits and bobs. A couple of things I'm not necessarily meant to say anything about at the moment, but all sorts okay. of bits and all sorts of bits and bobs. Okay, well, we'll you'll, be watching you'll, your Instagram. You'll hopefully, you'll hopefully see something soon. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So thank you everyone for joining us. And Rob, thank you again. And uh, we will continue this conversation in the Topography Dojo Facebook group. If you guys want to join us, there i'm pasting that in and uh rob i will invite you there we can have a continue the conversation there if there's any other questions we'll answer them there otherwise cool. have a good night and uh, if you want to watch the replay come right back to this link and you guys can watch it over again thanks Thank so, much. so much thanks so much have a good night bye bye okay bye bye